It's a pleasure to invite Professor Ilana Gozes from Tel Aviv University to talk about activity-dependent neuroprotective protein deficiency models, synaptic and developmental phenotypes of autism-like syndrome toward innovative drug development. Okay, so to a totally different subject that was just introduced. So I'm working on a syndrome that actually discovered it was discovered partly on my work of 20 years, and it's called the ADNP syndrome. And in the morning, there was a puzzle uh, with several, syndrome, several autistic syndromes. So ADNP is one of those, and actually a, a prevalent one. So I'll tell you the story from kind of the beginning. So we discovered ADNP about 20 years ago, and we were looking to see proteins that protect the brain, endogenous protein that protects the brain, that are made by the support cells in the brain, by the glial cells, the glue cells. And we discovered ADNP, and we discovered also an active site within ADNP, very, very short active site that we called NAP, and it was also called davunetide, and now it is called CP201, and we are developing it in the clinic, and that's the neuroprotective site. So we discovered it in vitro, we cloned it, and, and we saw that it's protecting neurons against blockade of electrical activity, so hence the name activity-dependent neuroprotective protein. And then we looked to see what does it do in the entire animal, and when we knocked it out, it's a no-brainer, there is no brain. So it is essential for the neural tube closure at about nine days in the embryonic, in the developing embryo. So no ADNP, there is no brain. And, and ADNP regulates during embryonic development about 500 genes uh, that are necessary for the development of the brain. And uh, recently, when whole exome sequencing uh, began and trio analysis that we've all heard about this today uh, has begun. Uh, it was discovered that ADNP is mutated in, in autistic children or within the autistic, uh, autism spectrum disorder. And, uh, and here you see a recent publication of ours looking at 78 children and you can see that there are many points on the ADNP gene that can be mutated, each represent a child. There are some mutations that are uh, more abundant, and, um, but, but it can, all the mutations known up to date are actually truncating mutations. So actually the two alleles are expressed, you know we have two alleles, ADNP is on chromosome 20, and we have two alleles. One is expressed as a normal, and the other, because if two, the two won't be exp expressed, you won't have a brain. <laughs> so one needs to be expressed in order to have a brain, but the other one, in the case of a mutation, is truncated. So it's like haploinsufficient, or you have only one active protein instead of two in the children, the ADNP children. So what is the ADNP syndrome? And you see it's a, the, the technology is licensed to Coronis uh, Neurosciences and it is in development. I'll talk about it also today. So ADNP is one of the most frequently mutated genes within the autism spectrum disorder. 0.17% of the autistic patients. Um, there are 60% males and 40% females, so it doesn't seem to be uh, reliant into in any side. It is caused, as I said, by a stop mutation or frame ship stop mutation in one allele. And the, uh, the symptoms manifest early and include abnormalities in a range of sensory, motor, cognitive function, intellectual disability. All the, child the children are intellectually disabled. A cognitive disorder, social deficit, and motor development delays. By the way, originally when the syndrome wasn't known, it was misdiagnosed sometimes for Engelmann syndrome, which we just heard about. Um, and the, one thing that we discovered together with the parents is that ADNP patients are detectable through premature uh, tooth eruptions. They have full mouth of teeth at the age of one year of uh, most of them. So, so the regu ADNP regulates not only brain formation but also bone and teeth. Uh, so calculating the, the prevalence, we estimate to be in the developed world, so in, in uh, Japan, um, the United States, and the EU, about 20,000 uh, patients. Right now, diagnosed, there are about 180, but every day there is another child that is added to the, uh, the patient uh, population. 
So now <laughs> to, to the science. So how does, why, why is it so important? So it regulates 500 genes, but what does it do uh, to, to change the cognition and, and to so much affect the, the development and cause this syndrome? So originally discovered in the lab, and it was discovered by Dr. Sar Oz, who was a student at that time. We looked to see what is the mechanism of activity, and we found that, that uh, the, the small fragment of ADNP, what we call NAP, the active site actually binds to a protein that is in the end of the microtubules. So microtubules are like the, the skeleton of the nerve cell and also the transportation system in the nerve cell. And, and uh, it binds to the end of it and then causes microtubule dynamics. So it is essential for formation of the synapses and for movement of material along the axons. And you see here, it's a nerve cell not treated with uh, a NAP, so, sorry, and then treated with NAP, and you see many more uh, uh, green dots, which are actually synaptic connection, or, or as we call, dendritic spines. So, uh, so ADNP, what we are hypothesizing then, is essential for dendritic spine formation. And the hypothesis, we now checked it, so we have a paper that just came out just now in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, where we labeled uh, nerve cells with green fluorescent protein, somebody got the Nobel Prize for that, and we labeled and we saw, and then we can actually measure the number of dendritic spines or the number of synapses, we can count them. And you see it here, you see the normal situation, and then when you lose some ADNP, there is less dendritic spines. And you see it here quantitatively, so we measured it on many, many animals, and you see it here also quantitatively in males and females. You see it here, this was the hippocampus, the area of learning and memory. Here in the motor cortex, here you see it even more. You see the comparison, this doesn't move very well. You see the comparison between the normal and the ADNP haploinsufficient, so only one copy of ADNP in the mouse, and you see the loss of dendritic spines this uh, green uh, protrusion, and then you, we treat with our peptide the small fragment of ADNP, the active site that we call NAP, and we get it back. And we get it back both in males and in females. And this is just enlarged now for everybody to see again. And this is in the cortex, and you see ADNP++ plus plus is the normal, plus minus is the, 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 the animal that is mimicking the children, and there is much less protrusion, much less synapses, and then we add NAP and we normalize it. And, uh, and this is also translated, now this is, I, women like to get into details, so I get into details. So we looked, we did what, we actually sequenced the whole RNA, expressed RNA, and then we chose 100 genes about, and we checked them to see what changes as the cause of ADNP a mutation or less ADNP in the mouse, and how is it corrected by NAP? And we found two major genes, we found the whole network, and two major genes that were changed or regulated at the, gen the genetic level. One was PSD95, and that's the gene that we labeled, the green gene that you saw, in the, or the red gene actually, that you saw in the previous slide. So it, this is a gene that is important for the formation of synapses, and another gene that we found kind of in the center of the, of the network is called ACT1, which is associated with tissue growth, like brain growth. So this, uh, the synapse formation and the brain growth both are defected when you have less ADNP. So ADNP is very central, and this is corrected by the treatment with the, our, our small fragment, NAP. And this, you don't need to go into the details, there is no exam after that, but we looked specifically at genes that change as a consequence of a posity of ADNP, mimicking the children, and then how are they corrected by NAP, and we found many genes that were corrected, here you see uh, all of them, uh, and they were corrected either when we treated very young animals, and also when we treated them when they were already mature, at three months of age, we still see correction, and we saw it in the cortex, in the cerebral cortex, the area that is associated both with learning and memory, but also with motor behavior, and the hippocampus, learning and memory, and also in spleens, in the peripheral tissue, which means that there is also maybe increased inflammation in the children or in the mice, and we can correct it. And, uh, and this we also compared to cells from 
uh, from patients that you just saw this lecture about uh, IPS cells. We looked at cell lymphocytes, at cells from the periphery of patients, and we compared them. So I'll show you the data later. And then we also looked for behavior. How is this synaptic dysfunction correlated with behavior, and can we correct it? So we looked throughout development. We heard in the morning about animals talking to each other. So we looked at how the pups call the mothers. And apparently, if they have too little ADNP, they don't call the mothers. But if we give them a nap, they do. And, and you can see it here. So they don't call. We give them nap, they do call. And this is how we pictured it. And also, we looked for developmental milestones. So for example, this is negative geotaxis. The mouse has to go up rather than to fall down. You see, and, and we measure the time when they acquire the, the behavior. And you see that the ADNP, the normal ones acquire the behavior earlier than the mice that have only one copy. We treat them, they are better. And you see, you see all the mice here. We actually had like 170 mice particip participate in this uh, study. We also measured uh, their uh, length because the children are a little bit short. And we found that they are indeed a bit shorter. And the treated mice were somewhere in the middle. We treat, by the way, with a small fragment by intranasal administration. I see Shlomi Saragovic, who actually did the work, sitting right here. And, uh, and here you see uh, also, uh, we, we also look to see how they, uh, their gait, how do they walk. And you see we have a, a very nice machine, which is called catwalk. And we measure the, the space between the, uh, the distance between the, the two steps and stuff, and, and parameters like that. And what you see here the, is that the, the animals, and we always look at males and females, uh, you see that the animals that have a, uh, haploid insufficiency or animals that have half the content of the ADNP are slower. We treat and we actually uh, correct, for example, here. And, uh, and then we also measured, and you saw this in the morning, we measured the strength. So we measure hanging wire, how strong are their, uh, the, the muscles. And you see that they are, so hanging wire test and grip. So, so what you see here is that the males were actually uh, uh, more affected and corrected by, by treatment. So as you see here, the males were more affected. In contrast, the females were more autistic. So we also have social recognition. We look how much time they spent with the mouse versus a cup, an object, and the males are okay, but the females are actually uh, less, uh, they, they, they don't differentiate. The, the females, when they have half the content of ADNP, they don't differentiate it so well between the cup and the mouse. We treat them, and they are normalized. And the same goes for their smell uh, um, characteristics. So, so you see this you see here. We give them different smells. Only when they, we treat them with a nap, they are behaving uh, normally. They recognize the different smells. And then we, we looked at social memory, and both sexes are affected. When we treat, they, we normalize them. So we actually, here I made a whole list of what we saw. So we saw cognitive impairments, speech impediments, global developmental delayed, for example, as you remember, the delayed A writing reflex, short stature, uh, they have increased touch sensitivity. I didn't uh, emphasize this, but we saw that as well. They have abnormal dentation, as I spoke about the, the teeth, the tooth eruption. They have motor impediment, synaptic structural aberration, and gene expression patterns. And all of these were, are also found in patients with ADNP uh, syndrome. And most of them are corrected when we treat with NAP in this uh, particular animal model. So, so the animal model, we have it already for about 10 years. And, and the animal model actually predicted the situation in humans, but now we studied it in depth. So we had an animal model and we went to the human, and now we are back at the animal model and we tested the, the compound and it seems to be working on all facets that are of interest to us. So, so this actually take us, uh, takes us straight to the clinic, so I need to thank my laboratory for this uh, excellent work and move to the clinic. So also 20 years ago, maybe a little bit less, uh, we started the company 
uh, in Canada it was, but which we called the Lone Therapeutics, and this company did phase one clinical uh, trials with NAP, and at that time it was called the Vunetide, also AL108, <laughs> and then phase two A efficacy studies in amnestic mild cognitive impairment, and phase two A efficacy studies in cognitive impairment associated with schizophrenia. The company was called the Lone Therapeutics. I always like to say Alon was my maiden name. It was after my father's name, actually. And now the, the, the compound is actually licensed by, uh, exclusively by Coronis Neurosciences, and we go to the ADNP syndrome. But before that, before we go to the ADNP syndrome, uh, we did, as, as I said, it was in phase two, a clinical uh, trials in several populations showed efficacy both in the amnestic mild cognitive impairment patient increase in cognition and also in the cognitive impairment associated with schizophrenia patients where it increased activities of daily living and it showed safety in more than 500 patients. So we think it's safe. We know that it gets into the cerebral spinal fluid. Here you see the efficacy on the schizophrenia patients on the activity of daily living, and, and you see uh, uh, that it is significant, uh, uh, quite highly actually, and, and uh, to be uh, 12. And, um, and now, uh, because of the suitability to the syndrome, to the ADNP syndrome, because uh, there is a positive in ADNP, and what we are bringing back to the patient is actually a, a, a small fragment of ADNP that increases the endogenous activity, and we work on all facets that are deficient in the patient. Uh, so the compound got, and this coronis got, actually a, a, an orphan drug status by the FDA, and, uh, and this is the management uh, team of coronis neuroscientists. Dr. Eric Musica is sitting here, me, and, and Dr. Sar Ozo is also sitting here. And the most exciting <laughs> that happened a month ago is we visited the FDA with a clinical plan with 400 pages, <laughs> and the FDA really liked the plan, and, uh, uh, and so we have uh, like a green uh, light to, to follow up, and we have the best uh, minds uh, in the world of autism uh, that are working with us, uh, and two uh, major clinical centers in the United States, uh, one run by Professor uh, Raphael Bernier in Seattle, Washington, and the other uh, clinician is Dr. Uh, Alexander Govels, Kolevzon in Mount Sinai. So, uh, and, and uh, Alex Kolevzon actually studied in the Sackler Faculty of Medicine here. <laughs> so, uh, so we are ready to continue, and we also have uh, the, the, uh, one of the best in the world uh, clinical uh, research organization led by uh, Dr. Michael Murphy, who specializes specifically in uh, um, often drug and often diseases. So, so, uh, so we are ready. And this is uh, the Coronis uh, Board of Director. And but we do all this work for, for the children and for the parents. And, and Sandra uh, Bedrosian's uh, ceremony, she came with us to the FDA. She leads the, the uh, ADNP Kids Research Foundation. And these are the additional mothers on the team. And you also see me. And this is one child. Thank you. Probably yes, and uh, uh, and there may be an, an association, you know, because in, in idiopathic uh, autism, especially those that are suffering from cognitive impairment, it will probably work. Uh, but this syndrome, it's it's really, it, it's like a replacement uh, therapy. So the first thing to show is indeed to go to this syndrome because it is. We are returning part of the protein that will enhance the protein activity. Once it is there, then we can go to idiopathic, and we can. We are actually also thinking about going to other uh, often uh, diseases within the autism spectrum disorder that are very similar. 
to, to, ADNP, to the ADNP syndrome. And as I said, actually some of the children were misdiagnosed for Engelmann, even for RET. So, so we can think about uh, uh, other uh, indications within the autism spectrum and, and other, and we also have some pipeline compounds that we can go with. All right, thank you. All right.